Hi, in this video I want to introduce you to a new type of curve and the set of mathematical functions that describe it. A catenary curve is the shape that a flexible uniform chain or cable assumes under its own weight when hung between two fixed points. And here we have such a curve. It looks a little bit like a quadratic but with a flatter bit at the bottom here. So this bit is a bit more flat than a quadratic. It is a common curve observed in various structures, such as suspension bridges and arches. And we've got an example of that here where we have this suspension bridge, and this is the upside down catenary curve. The equation that describes the catenary curve is based on the hyperbolic cosine function, which we call cosh. And the equation for cosh is e to the power of x plus e to the minus x all divided by 2. And this gives rise to other hyperbolic functions that include sine of x, which is e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x divided by 2, and fan of x, which is e to the 2x minus 1 divided by e to the 2x plus 1. These functions look similar to the unit circle functions cos, sine and tan, and they do share lots of similar properties, which I'll talk about in a future video in this playlist. But throughout this video, I'm going to show you how to derive the equation for fan of x, which is this one here, how to calculate with cos, sine and fan of x, and how to solve basic equations involving hyperbolic functions. Okay, so if we look at example one, We've been given cosh of x and shine of x, and we've been asked to show fan of x, which is this. So these are quite similar to the unit circle functions in trigonometry, where we have tan of x, but this time fan of x, which is equal to shine of x over cosh of x. Now with trigonometry, we would leave it in this form, but with hyperbolic functions, we can take this further. We know shine of x, e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2, and we'll divide this by cosh of x, so e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. And we can simplify this fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2. So these will cancel, and we get e to the x minus e to the negative x over e to the x plus e to the minus x. And we can simplify it further by multiplying a numerator and denominator by e to the x. Because what will happen is, when we multiply this by e to the x, we'll add the two powers and we'll get e to the 2x. And then when we add this x to this negative x, it cancels to make 0 and e to the 0 is 1. And on the denominator, the same thing will happen. We'll add this x to this one using a multiplication rule of indices, so e to the 2x. And this x added to this one will make 0, so again 1. And this is the equation for fan of x, okay? So in example 2, we're going to calculate with these hyperbolic functions using the exponential form. So to work out with shine of 2, well, we'll convert this to exponential form. So the shine of 2 will equal e to the 2 minus e to the minus 2 all over 2. When we work this out on a calculator, we get approximately 3.63. And for cosh of a half, again using the exponential form, we get e to the half plus e to the negative 1 half over 2 which is approximately 1.13. And for C, fan of 8 will give us e to the 2 times 8, so e to the 16 minus 1 over e to the 16 plus 1, which is approximately 1. Okay. So I hope this has given you an idea on how to calculate with hyperbolic functions. In example 3, we'll look at how to solve equations Okay, so we've been given shine of x is 3 quarters, and we've been asked to work out x. So to find x, we'll convert shine of x into exponential form. 
So we have e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 will equal 3 over 4. We'll multiply both sides by 2. So e to the x minus e to the negative x will equal 3 over 2. And then we'll move the 3 over 2 to the left hand side. And this will equal 0. So now we need to cancel out one of these e to the x's. And we can do this by multiplying both sides by e to the x. When we multiply this by e to the x, we'll add the two powers. And we'll get e to the 2x. When we add the powers with this negative x and x, they will cancel to make 0. And e to the 0 is 1. And then we'll have negative 3 over 2 times e to the x. And this will equal 0. I'm going to write this a little bit differently in descending powers of x. So minus 3 over 2 e to the x minus 1. I mean, you might see that this looks a little bit like a quadratic where we have a power of 2, a power of 1, and a constant. And we can actually factorize this. So we get e to the x minus 2 and e to the x plus 1 half. We can see that this works because negative 2 plus a half is negative 3 over 2 and negative 2 times a half is negative 1. So when we solve this, e to the x equals 2 and e to the x is equal to negative 1 half. But we know that e to the x always has to be greater than or equal to 0. So this is not a valid solution. So to find x from this, we need to take the natural log of both sides. The natural log and the e will cancel. So we're left with x will equal the natural log of 2. Okay. So do you want to try and work out the cosh of x equals 13 over 5 using a similar method? You can pause the video and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So the first thing we'll do is we'll write it in exponential form. So we have the cosh of x is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. And this is 13 over 5. We'll move this division of 2 to the right hand side. So e to the x plus e to the minus x is now equal to 26 over 5. And then we'll move this constant term to the right hand side. Minus 26 over 5 equals 0. And again, to cancel out this term, we'll multiply both sides by e to the x. So now we have e to the 2x plus the 1, this negative x added to this one will make 0. And then minus 26 over 5 e to the x. And again, I'm going to write these in descending powers of x. So e to the 2x minus 26 over 5 e to the x plus 1 equals 0. And this will factorize into e to the x minus 5 multiplied by e to the x minus 1 fifth. So e to the x will equal 5 and e to the x will equal 1 fifth. And again, if we take the natural log of both sides, we get x will equal the natural log of 5, and we'll do the same to the other. And x will also equal the natural log of 1 fifth. We could actually use the power rule of logs here, and that could be equal to nat minus the natural log of 5, bringing this one over down here okay well thank you very much for watching i hope you found that useful and it's giving you an idea on hyperbolic functions you can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website mrmathematics.com another link in the description below thanks again and take care